Oh, hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco. Dish out on movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. It's just Marco here once again, and I am here to review another bad movie. This is one of those ones where I knew it was going to be bad, but I watched it anyway, and I watched it for a very specific reason. So, <coughs> I forgot that December 31st existed, and I needed to come up with something else to do on that day, and right now I am pretty sure I am going to be doing Fuck, Mary Kill for characters in movies from 2023. The problem was, I could only come up with 38 characters, and I needed one more character. So, I watched this so that I could put the main character, Sidney Sweeney, on the on the docket for the, the tournament. But also, there is really another character in the movie that I could put, too, because, well, there's another character who's actually a lot more attractive and, and really, like, you know, she's Australian, too, and, you know, if you guys don't know, I totally, totally love Australian women. That's like that's that's like if I had to have like a top five types of women, I would say like number three would be Australian women. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, anyways, this movie, anyone but you, I was immediately turned off by it because number one, I knew that it was going to be fake and phony, and I knew that you know look. We've seen this type of thing all the time, this type of romantic comedy, where you have the two pretty people who are the most popular, uh, and it's like Hollywood, they have this magical hat, and it's got the names of popular actors and actresses, and they say, guys, there's too many different superhero movies, we gotta make a rom-com, so let's pick a random name out of the hat, oh, the guy from Top Gun 2, who wasn't Tom Cruise or Miles Teller. Oh, that guy. Boom. And then they get the names of the actresses. They put them in the magical hat. They shake it up. Boom. Oh, look, who's that? Oh, Sidney Sweeney, the, 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 the girl with the weird eyes who gets naked all the time in Euphoria. Boom. We got a rom-com, guys. Yeah. It's going to make lots of money because it's about two pretty people dating each other like we've never seen that before in the history of movies and television shows and everything else, you know. Uh, so, you know, obviously this movie's going to be really, really amazing. But unfortunately, it is a piece of shit. This movie... Not only is it an insult to romance, not that I would know very much about it, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, uh, but not only that, but it is a terribly cliched movie where you know exactly what's going to happen. The main characters, they have no chemistry whatsoever, uh, they're more like brother and sister than like boyfriend and girlfriend. Uh, it's it's really really bad. The 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 romance scenes, you know, they had a, a sex police person on set, so they look terrible. And you know, and another thing, well, we'll get into the movie because I'm going to dissect this whole movie. Uh, I really really resent having to watch this movie because I knew it was going to be bad. I knew it. Uh, I gave it a chance though. I I was like, you know, maybe it'll be good, and I'll be like, wow. That one time, the movie about the two pretty people being together forever is, is good. But no, it's, it's terrible. So first off, in the opening scene, and this is all going to be spoilers, by the way. So, in the opening scene, Sydney Sweeney, she goes into the bathroom to go to the bathroom, obviously. And after she's done... She turns on the sink and gets water all over her pants. 
so she has to uh, dry her pants off by using the, the blow dryer for your hands. But the way that she does it, she's, she's like air thrusting and humping the air like she's, she's thrusting towards the, 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 dr the blow dryer and then she takes off her pants and she dries those and then she lifts up her leg and she's thrusting with her leg lifted up. And it's like, oh, wait a second. Where have I seen that before? Oh, yeah. The Mr. Bean movie. Bean, the movie. They ripped off, copy and pasted that sequence where Mr. Bean, he's in the, the bathroom at the, the art place, the art uh, gallery, art institute, whatever it's called, and he splashes water all over his pants. He goes, oh, ah! You know, like Mr. Bean, like Mr. Bean does, and then he he goes over and uh, to the blow dryer and he humps the blow dryer. He takes off his pants. He he humps the blow dryer more, and then another guy watches him, and and like it's so hilarious and funny. And then it still doesn't work, and so then he covers his his genital area with the the brochure, and it's really really funny. And this movie ripped that off. Why? Why would you do that? Did you not think anyone would notice? I really like the Mr. Bean movie. You can be damn sure that I noticed. I watched that Bean movie in the summer when I was really, really sick. I th that was one of the movies that I watched to, to cheer myself up. And, and so, yeah, I noticed. But in this movie, it was done terribly because one of the biggest issues with the movie is that Sydney Sweeney, she might know how to get naked and she might know how to do drama and do serious, like, acting where she's doing, like, intense uh, character studies and stuff like that. But she is not really good at doing comedy because in this whole movie... All the jokes that she has, she fumbles them. Because whenever she makes the jokes, you can feel that she's just an actress making the jokes. And that, you know, she's really just, like, having fun. She really, like, all the jokes that she had, she did not really do a good job with them. It was, like, kind of like, oh, look, she's having fun and she's getting to go on a vacation to Australia. Which, that's another thing that's shitty about this movie, is it's a vacation movie. You know those types of movies where, you know, you can just tell that they did the movie that so, so that they could go on this all-paid vacation? Because ba that's basically what this movie is. Like, they get to go to Australia, and it's like, yay. <laughs> and then they made the shitty movie uh, to uh, cover for it. You know, that's that's another thing about this movie. And then so she goes on a date with the Top Gun guy who's not Tom Cruise or Miles Teller. And, you know, the movie's idea of romance is two pretty people walking around making weird jokes to each other while weird music plays in the background. In other words, like, they have... It's nothing. It's like... They're, like, trying to show that th this couple, that they're starting to like each other. And it just, it doesn't work at all. And so, they hook up and they go on a date uh, at his apartment. And they sleep together, obviously. We don't get to see it, though, which is probably good because it, it would have looked terrible as it, as it does later in the film. But the next morning, <laughs> ten minutes into this movie, and they have the cliché where the girl walks in and overhears the guy talking smack about her. You know, that cliche that we've seen like a million times. I mean, I just saw it in a, in a comedy that I watched last month. It was another, you know, like modern comedy, a uh, quote unquote comedy as well. Uh, but like, seriously, we had to have that cliche. So that's one of the first cliches of the movie. Uh, the girl walks in and overhears the guy saying something mean about her. Oh, no! Meh! So, basically, the main story of this movie 
is that the main guy, the Top Gun guy, is friends with a guy who has a sister who's getting married to a girl, uh, to a, the sister of the main girl. And so it's all about how, like, they're getting married in Australia. So the two main characters are in Australia as well. And they have to pretend to get along so that they don't destroy the wedding and also so that they can uh, make their exes jealous and get with their exes, which the exes also enter the picture in a very cliche way. You know, all that plot is really cliche and been there, done that too. And one of the, the things about this movie is that, like, one of the jokes is, like, um, Sidney Sweeney makes, like, a joke about the main character's dick size. And then the main character jokes about how, uh, you know, he's not small at all. You know, and I just think, like, do, do romantic comedies... Did they really need, like, a main character who jokes about the size of his dick and how it's actually really, really big? Like, is that what was always missing from romantic comedies? Like, wow, romantic comedies have gotten really, really bad nowadays, guys. Like, like just thinking about The Shop Around the Corner, which was a movie I saw earlier this year, Probably one of the best movies I've ever seen. And just thinking about, you know, oh, that's what the shop around the corner was missing. It was missing the part where Jimmy Stewart joked about how he had a big dick. That's what that movie was missing. It wasn't like it was missing, like, you know, character or story or uh, character development or comedy or anything. No, it was it was missing Jimmy Stewart noting that he had a big dick. Like, ah, that's really, really funny. Not. And the shop around the corner wasn't missing anything, by the way. Because that movie's perfect. So then, they are in a plane together, and they are flying to Australia. And the main girl, B. Which, that's another weird thing. You know, you never see girls with the name B. You know, like Aunt B. That's her name. B. <laughs> well, this character, by the way, when she slept with uh, the main guy in the first opening uh, couple of minutes, she was cheating on her fiancé. Uh, her and her fiancé were, quote-unquote, taking a break. And she cheated on her fiancé. So, like, her character's trash. Don't like her. And then the guy, uh, as she j calls him, he's just a fuckboy. And uh, he is. I mean, he's a, he's a superficial character. You know, it's, it's very cliche, though, where, you know, two characters who don't like each other end up liking each other at the end. You know, it's, it's been there, done that. But the main girl... She she wants to go to the bathroom, but then uh, the main guy goes to the bathroom, so she can't. She doesn't want to go anywhere near him. And she sees that there's this man and woman sleeping on the airplane, and he has a cookie that he took a bite into. And she thinks that it's a good idea to steal his cookie. Like this random guy on the plane steal his cookie for herself and she's supposed to be the likable main character but she's not you know both of these people they're just superficial pretty people who are shallow and have nothing to them and are just like awful awful people uh and so she steals it but then uh she accidentally like adjusts the seat and so uh, her her jacket gets stuck in the seat and so then she mounts him uh, in, in multiple ways, and it looks like she's having sex with him because she's pulling on the jacket. And I thought, like, wow, number one, this is really unfunny. And number two, basically Sidney Sweeney has demonstrated that the only way that she can make jokes 
is by, like, pretending to have sex or looking like she's having sex on accident or just something to do with her body. Like, she can't actually make, like, any good jokes or be, like, funny. She has to, like, do these kind of weird, like, non-jokes where it's like, oh, look, it's it's really funny because that woman thinks that she's having sex with that guy and she's just pulling on the jacket. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> Not. And then another big plot of the movie, which you knew was going to come up later on in the movie too, is Sydney Sweeney's character dropped out of college and you know, she is not going to become a lawyer like Jenna overrated Ortega's uh, uh, boyfriend was going to in the uh, finest kind. Oh, wait, he dropped out, too. Never mind. Uh, that movie was bad, too. Or it, it wasn't that bad. It was it was better than this, but still pretty bad. But she drops out, and she doesn't tell any of the parents or anyone else. So you think, oh, that's going to be the secret that she has. And then at a certain point, the secret's going to come out. And it's going to be really upsetting. And there's going to be the sad period. And that's what ends up happening, by the way. Spoiler alert. And then they're, they're in Australia. And they do this really weird thing. Like, they're obs the people who made this movie are, like, obsessed with genitalia. They're obsessed with, like... Like, this is how you can tell that, like, they were not really meant to make, like, a real romance movie. Because they seem to think that romance revolves around genitalia. Like, they seem to think that, like, romance doesn't revolve around, like, people and uh, their personalities and them getting to know each other and... Uh, getting to like one another, or do anything like that. It's like, no, romance revolves around pretty person one and pretty person two in their genitalia. Um, or maybe it's just because they think that that's all that, they, that can be funny is genitalia. So they do this weird thing where uh, they get out sage, you know, to do a sage cleanse. And you know how when you do a sage cleanse, you can cleanse yourself. Or you can cleanse other people. Well, they go over to the main guy and the main girl. And they they put the sage around the girl's uh, womb area. Like near her, you know, her, her, her Sydney Sweeney Euphoria coochie. And then they go over to uh, the top gun guy and put it right in front of his genitalia. And I just thought, this is really retarded. Like, really? Like, you're sage cleansing their genitalia? <laughs> like, you just can't... You just can't make this shit up, guys. Why did they do this shit in these movies? That's so bad. And then we have to mention... So they're pretending to be together. Number one... Uh, so that they can make the wedding go th smoothly, which you know is not going to happen because it's very predictable and cliche. But number two, so that they can make their exes jealous. And I do have to mention once again, the Top Gun guy, he's got an ex, and she's so hot, she's Australian, and you're thinking like, why the fuck isn't she the main character? <laughs> like, if she was the main character... I would have liked this movie a lot more because you get 90 minutes of a, a hot Australian woman and her sexy accent and you get, uh, I don't know, like 10 minutes of Sydney Sweeney pretending to be funny. Uh, but they have what, what I would call the grab ass scene, which was another scene where it's like these people, because they're so pretty and, you know, they, the only way that it, it, they can be funny is with these weird jokes where, like, uh, they're trying to make it look like they like each other. So uh, she grabs onto his ass, and then he grabs onto hers, and they're, like, experimenting with the different ways that you can grab onto your partner's ass. And so 
it, but it's actually kind of hot, I guess, if, if you're into Sydney Sweeney. Um, I, I think you'd find it kind of hot, but other than that, like, it's really bizarre. And then she puts his hand, her hand down his pants, and she ba almost fingers him. It's really, really weird. And it's like, what the hell is going on here? But the joke is, is that everyone else, they're so focused on this koala bear that they don't notice this weird grab-ass scene going on. And then a giant Australian spider is in the guy's pants, and uh, they kind of fuck that joke up, too. And then, oh, uh, I don't even want to explain what happens next, because it's not worth it. It's just very, very stupid and lame and not funny. And 50 minutes into this movie, too, we've only seen two men fully naked. Like... You know, Sydney Sweeney, she's, you know, she she's had some kind of tight clothes on, but, like, the only nudity that we've seen in this movie, 50 minutes into it, is the two two male characters naked. And I was thinking, like, who made this movie? Ryan Murphy? Like, because, <laughs> like, that's some, that's some American horror story type of shit right there, where you have these female characters who should be getting nude, at some point, and instead, like, it's just, like, ten hours of, like, the guys, uh, being, uh, butt naked all the time. And then the main characters, uh, you know, I just gotta say, like, they're very, very selfish and one-dimensional shit people because of, like, putting on this image. that They were more so concerned with getting back with their exes than... Uh, making the sister's wedding uh, better and making it go smoothly. And so that's another thing is that, like, they're really preoccupied with, like, oh, I want to get with that girl and oh, I want to get with that guy. And so we, we're going to make them jealous. And it's like, I, I hate these people. I hate everything about them. I hate them. And, of course, the main characters end up liking each other very, very cliche. And now here is where we get to one of the worst scenes of the movie because they had a, a sex police person on set. And so the sex scene was going to, it was destined to look like shit. The sex scene in this movie, you don't even get to see Sydney Sweeney fully naked, like her full body. You don't even get to see like her full nude ass, her boobs or coochie, or anything, like, all you see is, like, the outline of, like, a little of her, and it's just really, really bad, the way that it's filmed, it looks like a mattress commercial, the way that they're doing, like, this queer montage, and they're not even, like, doing anything, basically, they're just kissing, and it looks like a mattress commercial, it's terrible, and it's like, wow, we got to see these two men, like, fully nude, basically, but then the one scene where the female character is supposed to be fully nude, you cover it up so that you can't really see her full naked body. And, and uh, they're doing this terrible sex scene because they have a, a sex police person and so it looks like shit. Like all the other sex scenes nowadays look like shit. And, you know, that's something else that I think people haven't considered, by the way, is maybe you wouldn't think that sex scenes are unnecessary if they actually felt and looked like real sex scenes should, you know? Because sex scenes, they used to be really, really good, and you used to look forward to them. You used to be like, oh, yeah, I can't wait to watch that movie so I can see, like, uh, like Knock Knock, you know, or I, I can't wait to watch Knock Knock. So I can see that uh, Ana de Armas uh, get naked and then that other woman get naked uh, with Keanu Reeves. I can't wait to see that. But nowadays, it's just like you know it's going to be bad. You know it's going to look like shit. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like a mattress commercial. And then there is a big reveal scene in this movie. <laughs> If you guys don't know, a big reveal scene is one of the most annoying, stupid cliches that you can have in a movie. 
it's basically where characters the whole movie have been lying and then through a very contrived way they are revealed to be liars in front of like a crowd of people it's usually at a party you think about can't buy me love you know where uh, at the party uh, it's revealed that um, he's renting the main girl he's paying her to date him you know, you think about all these movies, you know, you have the big reveal scene. Well, in 2023, we are still having the big reveal scene in movies. So that's another reason why this movie should be erased from history, uh, is because they had to have a big reveal scene. And it's so cringeworthy and so stupid and so contrived and manipulated and right after the big reveal, guess what there is that's also very cliche? The sad period. <laughs> you know the sad period scene where, the, oh, main character A is sad. And main character B is sad. And everyone's sad. And everything is really, really sad. Wah, wah, wah. And it has to be redeemed at the end. Wah. They have a sad period, guys. In 2023, they have the sad period scene. <sighs> so, yeah, I, I hate this movie. I really do. Uh, it's not just because it's about, like, you got the two pretty people. And it's just like, you know, I'm sick and tired of seeing that, honestly. It's also because it's so cliché. And it's so, like, terribly written. It's terribly acted. Except, I will say, I, I do kind of like the main guy. You know, the Top Gun guy. I would like to see him in another movie. Because he's got uh, some charisma. And he's, he's a likable guy. Uh, I just don't like Sidney Sweeney. Because she's not funny. And, and the jokes that she makes are terrible. And she doesn't fit at all with this guy. You know, he fit with the Australian girl. Uh, so they get to the end. And he is going to hook up with the Australian girl, uh, the ex. Because she magically decides to leave her boyfriend that she had the whole movie. Uh, she's another terrible person, by the way. Because she she admitted earlier on in the movie that she was just hooking up with him to to sleep with him so you know she's a user and you know that's the thing that you got to realize about a lot of these romantic comedies nowadays with these pretty people is that whenever you see these people these characters they're always a bunch of users they're always doing something that i'll talk about uh at the end and i'll call and i i, I have a name for it too that's how bad it is But like, yeah, she wants to get with the main guy finally, and it's like, oh, look, he succeeded, but oh, wait, no, obviously, he's not going to get with her. Oh, no, he's not going to get with the Australian woman, you know, the, the, the best woman in the fucking movie. He's going to go chase after Sidney Sweeney, and oh, boo-hoo, Sidney Sweeney's really sad on her sister's wedding, and she goes off to cry. And she goes off to walk around and mope like a weirdo. And he has to chase after her. Wow. <sighs> so, yeah, he turns down the Australian woman, making him the biggest idiot on the planet. And I will say, too, I did watch this on YouTube, by the way. And so I would say that the funniest part of this movie is actually when the guy who is filming it, there's this really funny part at the end where he thought he was going to get caught, and so then he covered up the camera. And so <laughs> it was really funny because, like, the scream was black, and you could just hear the dialogue and the music, and you understood that, like, uh-oh, this guy almost got in trouble. <laughs> it was really funny. Like, that was the only funny part of this whole movie 
was like the guy thinking he was going to get in trouble because he's going to post it on YouTube so that people don't have to go see it in theaters and waste their hard-earned money on these pretty people who don't need it. In the ending credits, I will say one of the only, the only thing, actually, the only thing besides the Australian woman that I liked about this movie is that in the end credits, they did this really creative and fun, funny thing where all the different characters sung along to the song that, the, that they played twice in the movie, by the way. And I thought that that was really nice and funny and fun. You know, they did that in Magnolia, but that was, you know, done seriously. And I thought that that was really cool. So, yeah, the only good part of this movie is the end credits. That sounds about right. But then another fucked up thing, and now this is where I get to the term that I've created. The Australian woman ex, she decides to hook up with Sydney Sweeney's ex. So even though these characters, they have no chemistry, there's no reason for them to be together other than they're both there so they both need to be together for some idiotic reason. Uh, they get together, and it's like, ew. Because th there's no reason for them to be together at all, and so it's basically like musical chair dating. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I think of it as. I, I call it musical chair dating. We have this group of people, and people break up with each other, and then who the, who do they date? Oh, they just date other people in their little friend group. It's really cringeworthy. It's really gross when you think about it, too. Um, the, the less you think about it, the better. And so, like, that that's how this movie really ends, is that, like, uh, the main two pretty people get together, and then the main pretty exes get together, too. Oh, yay! So, overall, this movie is uh, really unfunny. It's very cliché. And I, it's really bad. It's not as bad as Rebel Moon, though. It, but it's still pretty bad. And I'm glad that I uh, saw it so that I could expose that they took that scene right out of the Mr. Bean movie. Like, I challenge you to watch the Mr. Bean movie, uh, which it, it's very good, you know. Just watch that because it's good. And then watch this and tell me personally... Marco, the, the, anyone but you is not ripping off Mr. Bean. And if you tell me that, I am going to be blown away at your stupidity. <laughs> and so, oh shit, I have to give it a food review. Oh yeah. Shit. <laughs> shit. I don't even know what... Ow, shit, I just fucking knocked over my water. Uh, what do I even give this movie? A piece of shit? That's what this movie deserves. No, I can't give it that. I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Eh. Okay. So... Let's think about two really popular food items with us, with Safi and I. Or I guess just with myself. I really love spaghetti. I really love spaghetti. It's my favorite food. And I also really love salmon. Salmon, uh, like freshly cooked salmon, bake it in the oven with some, uh, some rice and some broccoli. You know, that's a perfect meal. Um, take salmon and take spaghetti, put it in a blender and then serve it to you. That's this movie. It's like, yeah, that's exactly what this movie is. is because you know that when this movie was crafted, it was not crafted based around a story, for sure, because there is no story here. It's just cliche after cliche after cliche. It's been there, done that, been there, done that. How many times are we going to do this and do that? Uh, can't we come up with something new and original? No, we can't because we're Hollywood and we just want to make money by seeing 
the two pretty people have their little pretty person romance. But when you blend together spaghetti and salmon, you don't get a good meal, (laughs) right? You get a a pile of crap that you're like, ew, I don't want to eat that. Throw that in the garbage. Ew. And I'm also kind of sick of having salmon and spaghetti because, you know, I'd like to have different things. I'd like to have a chicken or, you know, pot pie or uh, pork, pork tenderloin or something, you know, like something different. I'm sick of having the same old shit. So that's what I would give this movie. And please like this video and comment. And, you know, if you enjoyed the movie, that's fine because it is a very, like, inoffensive movie you know it's just kind of like a dopey comedy that you know is so dopey that it makes me want to jump off a cliff and uh never return and uh yeah and then please subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more honest movie reviews like this because i will be a hundred percent honest and people won't like it either they don't at all like there was this one guy and he commented on uh the Fargo video, and he said that I didn't know what I was talking about because, and I don't like character, I don't like character or character development, and it's so funny because I literally spent that whole video explaining how I was so pissed off that, like, instead of getting to develop these characters more, that we got this shitty, like, uh, rip off of Wizard of Oz episode from season four and that like I actually wanted that episode to <laughs> be all about these characters so like I don't know how that person missed me saying that or it's just almost like people just hear what they want to hear so like <laughs> they can complain and uh, act like retards in the comments but, like, yeah, like, if, if you like this movie, I don't care, you know. But it's bad. It's really, really bad. Uh, so, yeah, goodbye, everybody. See you soon for a, a special video tomorrow, a very special Goosebumps-related video.